And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. I want to let you know I'm bringing this video to you right from Westlake Village, California. It's another beautiful day out there. It is Wednesday, October 18th. Hump day. Happy hump day to all you people out there trying to get through your week. I hope I can bring you some news uh, that is valuable and that I find interesting. And I will cover a few topics we discussed over the past couple of days. Of course, the dollar, Bitcoin's price action, Ethereum, Ripple, and we'll also get into ApeCoin and um, some of the major economic news events around, basically things that are going to affect the dollar. And the first thing I want to bring up from yesterday, we talked about uh, the housing market and that data, which was coming out this morning and was considered a high economic event. So housing starts and building permits uh, that came out this morning. So let's see, housing starts came in lower than expected, which was bearish for the dollar and building permits came out higher than expected. So the expectation was 1.53. The actual was 1.56 and vice versa. Uh, Housing starts was expected to be 1.475, came out 1.439. So to me, it sounds like one kind of cancel, canceled out the other. Um, usually this is not a, a very, very high impact um, reading, but it just goes to show on one hand, what PAL is doing is working. On the other hand, building permits, maybe people are doing more new construction for buildings and apartment buildings. Um, you would have me. So overall, based on the dollars reaction here, to me, it sounds like the news was a bit more bullish for the dollar. And again, as the dollar goes up, this is King dollar, the line of the jungle right now. This is the dollar. And you've got every other currency around the world falling through the floor. And I'll just bring up the German pound real quick because this is the German pound over the last six months. It's fallen from a buck 40 to a buck 12. So doing a little simple math, that's about 30%, right? Nope, 21% from the high. So what do you do when your currency starts collapsing? Okay, let's take a look at Japan from the peak here in, let's just go back from January this year, down 31%. And you know, there's other currencies, look at the Euro absolutely getting killed. And so if it's a flight out of foreign currency into dollars, I would expect the dollar to remain bullish. And as we had mentioned, uh, the Fed's policy is gonna remain tight and quantitative tightening, you know, is going to be uh, in full force November 2nd, another 75 basis point rate hike um, that's due November 2nd. So what do you think that means for the markets? I'll let you uh, make a, you know, <laughs> a, a decision yourself. And, you know, one thing to also take a look is the two and 10 year yields on U.S. Treasury bonds. Wow, look at the two year just skyrocketing at four and a half percent. We said likely this thing was coming up to five percent. And this one's not far behind it. Uh, the next peak is going to be around five percent on the 10 year and the 30 year already taken out its pro January high or February high, February of 14. And the next is, yeah, 4.8. That'll be the next kind of resistance level. So as bond yields skyrocket in the U.S., why would you want to put your money over in a, you know, a guild in Europe when you could get 4% for 30 years over here in America? That's what I'm starting to hear from a lot of clients, actually. They're picking up bonds at 4%. And my thought is, well, um, what about next month when they raise it 75 basis points again? And does Europe run into the same problems that they're running into right now? And I'm just going to give you the uh, 
quick two minute version here. BOE Hauser mini budget caused full scale liquidation event for pension funds. It says, quote, this was a situation that went from we're ringing you to let you know to shouting on the phone to us within a few days. Um, it was a full sta- full scale liquidation event. That's what they're calling it. But basically pension funds own too many bonds when interest rates go up. Bonds take a loss. Those were leveraged pension funds. They got bailed out by the Bank of England. And that's not helping out the currency or setting a president, uh, precedence for other countries like Italy, which are likely to run into the same problems. Um, so again, that means if foreign currencies are going down, typically more people are going to head towards the dollar. And again, that's why we've been bullish on the dollar uh, just over the last few months. And until that narrative kind of changes, I would expect more of the same with the U.S. dollar. Uh, with the next target, really, um, just taking a look to the upside, a daily closure above 114 probably does get you up to uh, 117. And what else am I seeing on the fibs here? Right here, we came up to the 786, putting in a higher low at the 382. So yeah, it does really uh, depend what the dollar does right here for Bitcoin and these other assets. Let's bring it back to Bitcoin. Um, what are the other major economic news events that could push the dollar higher or lower? If you got any ideas, post a comment below. I'm going to be covering them as they come, but let's jump into Bitcoin's price action. Uh, that's why you guys are here. And I'm going to throw it on CMEs and uh, just stick with the range we've been talking about, uh, 20,500 to the upside. And, you know, um, am I going to move it down to this wick or I'm going to keep it at the 18,100 wick right there? I'd say any kind of a four hour closure, excuse me, 12 hour or higher. You want a higher term time frame closure above or below this range. And here's how this can play out. Either one, we make a higher high and a higher low and boom. Or two, it could play out like this. And this is how price action typically moves. Is you would break the range to the downside, get a little bit of a retracement, retest, and then you get the bigger move down. So we are right in the middle of the road, absolutely. So the question is, are you going to be bullish or bearish? And let's see if we can get any indicators to give us a bias here. Let's see what we got here. So volatility is extremely low on the four hour time frame. We are at 13%. Again, our level, our threshold is 20%. That's typically when the moves really get started. Momentum is to the downside, will remain down as long as Bitcoin is closing below 19,329. Let's take a look at the six hour. Momentum is to the downside. Volatility is very low. We have not got the expansion yet. The 12 hour, the same thing, except for momentum is to the upside and will cross down today below 19,022. Got five hours left on that closure. It is again Wednesday. And what else did I want to bring up? So we got the 12 hour, we got the daily, which again, we want to see this above 25% right now. Uh, daily stokes are crossed up, will cross down below 18,680. So again, we want to see expansion um, off of these lows to get the real move in play. The two days doing the same thing, except for stokes are crossed down. So the key is volatility expansion. We're waiting for the big explosive move. And, you know, what is going to be the catalyst? What is going to be the essentially the spark that lights the dynamite? I'm not sure, but um, that's why, you know, it's really easy to have ranges and not get stuck in the middle, you know, not knowing what to do. Um, it's easier in my opinion. And again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but as we break the range with volume, that will kind of 
give us an indication on whether there's a trend reversal or it's going to be a fake out. Um, yep. So what else did I want to bring up? The five day, same thing. We will cross down below 18.5. And the weekly is going to be closing up here in two more days. And we'll cross down below 19,033. So it looks like we're getting to the end of this boring time in the markets. There should be some explosive fireworks. Could it be another two weeks? Could it be another three months? Um, you know, this, this will weather your patience. Um, so to bring up just one other thing we talked about, and I'm actually going to point out on the Dow Jones, we are in this uh, falling wedge right here. And I recently, um, let's see, I recently took a course on Dow theory. And I just thought this was interesting as I was reviewing the course notes this morning. So Charles Dow, the guy they named the Dow Jones after, uh, was famous for technical analysis and you know, having a specific trading methodology and he primarily used the Dow Jones and he had six principles of trading. Um, the average discounts, everything accepts acts of God. He was talking about having, you know, multiple different stocks in the Dow Jones. I'm not going to explain each thing, but the one thing that pointed out to me this morning, um, he has a way to define a trend, right? A reversal and a confirmation signal and then how the market has bullish and bearish phases. But in particular, he defines a trend reversal with a 20% correction from the peak and then a lower high. And that's exactly what you have on the Dow Jones. And so I just thought that was kind of funny. But if you look at a 20% retracement, We nearly had that right here. And then another major lower high. So this plays into our theory that, hey, the dollar's bullish and the, Dow the downtrend likely continues in the stock market. And, you know, Bitcoin is kind of a higher beta tech stock. So if the stock market's in a major downtrend, the S&P's, you know, in a major downtrend, don't get me wrong, we can get a bounce out of this area, um, definitely. Uh, but uh, more and more, the news that I'm hearing out there, people are beginning to de-risk, move to cash, and kind of get ready for what could be one of the best buying opportunities uh, in history as the market creators, you know, the buy where there's blood in the streets. That's a great old saying. So um, I did say I'd talk about Ethereum. Ethereum Let's see if we can get the same kind of daily range. A break above or below is probably going to give us the next major move. And I would say, you know, this high right here, this guy right here. Um, there are multiple drives of divergence that are just, you know, formulating coming from this point right here. So if we do confirm this as another lower high on the daily time frame, we need a closure below 1,286, which would also flip the Stokes down on the daily time frame, and maybe we do get that, you know, second expansion. That's what I mentioned as it was low on Bitcoin. I said, hey, what likely happens? You get a little bit of a fake out goes up, comes back down. And then the second try, that's the real move for Ethereum. And I do suspect that move in Ethereum could be quite hefty. It's going to be more than Bitcoin. So the average move on Bitcoin is going to be 25% off the daily signal. Um, Ethereum is going to do more, you know, probably 30 to 40%. And where does that line up with so yeah, if we break this range on a daily closure, I'm looking for it to come down to about 1,080. Um, there's a massive trend line. You know, this goes all the way back to 
Oh, this guy back here in December 2020. Oh, gosh, that was great. Right after Ethereum really had dropped um, all the way down to 100 bucks. What an opportunity. So again, Ethereum, this is the range. We got 1400 to the upside and 1217 to the downside. A break of the range is going to get the next decent sized move. And I would say anywhere from 25 to 40 percent in either direction. So what is 30 percent look like? That would be a touch up to the purple 200. And I do imagine if we do get a bounce up to that purple 200, likely going to be a sell on the first pass. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but um, to the downside, if we took out 30 percent from here. Yeah, that would just get us down to the bottom wick there. So I wonder if we do play out a bounce initially off of that wick. That is typical for price action. And you do have some major support coming all the way back here from 2021. But if we begin to lose this region at 900 bucks, which I am looking at it saying, yeah, likely going to bounce on the first pass. Um, that if we start to lose that area, that 650 target is going to come into play. Um, so Mr. Dollar, are you going to continue with your bullish outlook? I don't know, but I would mediate that with that daily closure back above 113, call it 114. And I am going to be looking for some new highs on the dollar that would look bullish and bearish for Bitcoin. XRP is playing out the downside move. And we did call this one out with bearish divergence coming all the way back from this pivot right here, we said, hey, there are multiple drives, you know, I think it was four or five, six drives. And here's what I would go as far as to say you know, any kind of a daily closure, yeah, below this wick at 4388, uh, that's likely going to give you a move all the way down to that 39 call about 39 bucks with a small bounce and probably continuation from there. And that is if Bitcoin breaks the range to the downside. Remember, altcoins are going to do whatever Bitcoin does, but more. So vice versa, if we were going to look for an invalidation on XRP, what do we want to see? A daily closure, you know, above that wick at 56 cents. And you're looking at probably move up to 69 cents somewhere in that range. Um, yep. So that would be in invalidation on the other side. What's happening at ape coin. And we've been talking about this move right here for some time saying, Hey, look, we broke this channel to the downside. The measure move is going to be uh, all the way down to the bottom side of the range here to fill in these wicks, those wicks, they love to get filled. Remember that in price action especially if you get a big wick like XRP. I just saw one yesterday uh, or maybe it was two days ago. That's exactly what's happening right now. The wick is getting filled to the downside. And, you know, the question is, do we want to hold? So volatility is expanding above 20 percent. You've got momentum to the downside as long as we're below 48 cents. So. And you got the two drives of bearish divergence as price made a higher high there and a lower high here. And typically that does give you that move to the green 55. And then, you know, that that region would need to hold and more specifically. Yeah, if we lose the 41 cent region. This will be the first warning and this will be the uh, kind of nail in the coffin, so to speak. If, if Ethereum starts to lose this area, I think we could definitely come back and revisit the lows at about 32 cents. How does the five day look? And again, we called out the five day death cross right here. That's where you want to sell into the cross. And the question is where to take profits, how low is it going to go? And what is Bitcoin going to do the rest of this week? What's the dollar going to do the rest of this week? I really want to see if there's any more news coming out that I should just be 
rearing my head other than by the end of the year. Oh, the Fed's beige book. The beige book. I heard about that today as well. Which I don't, it says low on here. 20th, Philadelphia Manufacturing. Jobless claims, that should be initial jobless claims. That's coming up tomorrow. So what do you know? Another big economic event. Existing home sales. Yeah, some some high impact. Uh, I think job claims is going to be a big one as FedPal has been saying over and over and over. They're not going to pivot until job quits and job openings rebalance. So if they are failing at jobless claims, whatever that would be, I, I imagine if jobless claims are going down, yeah, it'll be bullish for the dollar. Let's see. A higher than expected figure should be seen as negative. Yeah. While a lower than expected figure should be bullish for the dollar. So if jobless claims go down, right? More people have jobs. They're going to be out spending money. The Fed is engineering a recession where people got to lose their jobs. They got to, they, uh, you know, people have to stop spending money. How do you do that? You got to make them feel poor. And the, I'm going to stick with that theory until somebody changes it. In regards to what we spoke about yesterday, I just want to throw this out again. Um, no, that's not it. We talked about the Fed pivot, and um, I just wanted to throw another scenario out there to you. Again, the Fed's policy is going to remain tight until inflation comes down, until job, you know, uh, job openings and job quits rebalance. So, <clears throat> but the statistics show the Fed pivots when interest rates get around 5.7%, when the federal funds rate gets that high, it's not going to get that high until, you know, maybe May of next year. So um, I just think something to consider is that this Fed pivot might be different than previous Fed pivots. So there is an opportunity, I think, perhaps that the stock market bottom is put in before the Fed pivots. Why is that? Well, people often price things in before they happen. So there's going to be a way to identify that in the stock market. We'll be going over that over the next few months. So make sure you like and subscribe if you want to be able to identify a macro low um, in Bitcoin, in stocks. Um, that's what we're here for is we're going to give you exactly what our thoughts are on the crypto markets and uh, even in the stock market, because that will affect cryptocurrency. We don't sell securities. We don't offer any securities. Um, but we are definitely there to help you uh, understand some of the dynamics of the cryptocurrency markets. Okay, last couple of things here. News for my social media guys here. Uh, MasterCard. They say they're going to help banks offer Bitcoin and crypto trading. So MasterCard is set to announce plans today for a program that will help the institutions make cryptocurrency trading easy. What did I tell you guys? I've been saying by the time it's like McDonald's and you can buy Bitcoin at your bank, right? Um, you might be, you know, a little too late. Um, so MasterCard. They're going to be working with Paxos to bridge the gap between banks and will manage security and regulate, regulatory compliance. Two big reasons many banks have stated for avoiding Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And here's what it says. There's a lot of consumers out there that are really interested in this, intrigued by crypto, but they'd feel a lot more confident if those services were offered by their financial institutions. So why have the banks been so slow to adopt crypto and offer it to their clients? As it's like walking into a Ford car salesman asking the Ford sales manager, should I walk across the street and buy a Chevy? No, right? They're never going to say that. And that's, um, but the Band-Aid is coming off because of demand. It's the consumers are demanding it. So they know, hey, we've got to adopt and change. 
sooner than later. So that's why they're building infrastructure for when the market bottoms out, they're going to be able to take advantage. That's my thesis. That's why everybody's getting in. And we hear another article every day of some bank, some MasterCard, some Visa that allows crypto payments seamless and easy right from your phone. I imagine that's how it's going to work. Uh, what else I want to bring up? Open interest. We've been saying, yeah, there's likely this 25. I think this next move is actually going to be around 40%. I think, uh, no, if it's to the upside, 25%. If it's to the downside, 40%, right? You should get bigger moves in the direction of the trend. Additionally, when volatility expands, you expect price to go in the direction of the trend. That is why it's so important to be able to identify what's a uptrend, what is a downtrend. And this is clearly a downtrend on the five-day time frame. And in fact, uh, stokes are going to be down as long as we close the next three days uh, above, call it 19000 bucks. So... That's it for uh, Bitcoin and uh, my comments on the federal funds rate. Again, something to consider is they might price a bottom in before the Fed pivots this time, not after. Just a thought. Um, I'll leave you with that today, guys. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. And I hope you learned a little bit more about trading. Take care.